All right, let's go ahead and uh, reflect this thing over the y-axis. So let's give ourselves a nice line right account of reflection, which is the black line right there. And we'll put P on there, 1, 5, about right there. Q is 3, 7, so right account. And R, 4, negative 1. Now, we don't have to draw the lines in here because sometimes, for some people, it makes it a little confusing. All we're going to do is look at the points. So, for example, P is one away from the line of reflection at 90 degrees. So, we're going to reflect it the other way. I'll make this closer. The other way, but one unit, again, away from the line of reflection gives us this new point, P prime. Q is three units away from the line of reflection at 90 degrees. So we go three units in the other direction at 90 degrees to find uh, Q, Q prime, right? And the same thing with R. This one is four units away at 90 degrees. So we're looking at four units the other way at 90 degrees to get R prime. And we can label these P, Q, R. All right, now we can connect these with lines. Yeah, something like that. There are the coordinates right there. I suppose you could do it on a computer if you wanted to, I mean, but then do it on the paper. Well, if the lights are off, then just know if you fall asleep, you may not get any of this, okay? And this one is a lot different than, well, the previous two transformations that we've gone over. <clears throat> well, that's true, but these videos are not very easy to watch because, well, it's math. So just keep that in mind if you don't want to pay attention. I, I would assume that it will affect your quiz score, which is on Tuesday for you guys. Yeah, a quiz score or a quiz? A quiz, because this is a short unit. In the grid below, triangle ABC has been rotated. <clears throat> they show triangle ABC right here. That's, that's the original pre-image. Uh, it's been rotated counterclockwise, which is important for you guys to know as well, that counterclockwise is in this direction, to the left. With the center of rotation at the origin, which we'll put the point right there. Let's get rid of that arrow, though. There we go. This process was repeated several times to create all of these images. And uh, you could use tracing paper, but we don't have time to do that right now. Label the corresponding vertices. Let's just look at one of these and label the vertices of one of them. Let's choose this one right here. All right. Well, we can see that C is on the inside of that or towards the 
center of rotation, so this would be C prime radical. On the outside, we've got A prime, and B prime then would be radical. All of those other triangles are images of that pre-image, or we could say that they're I images of other images, if we really wanted to, but that may be a little confusing right now. Describe the relationship between C and its images to the center of rotation. Do the same for A and its images. Does this relationship to the center of rotation hold true for B and its images? Well, yes. <coughs> What's going to happen here, for example, if we just look at C, and let's compare it to this C prime radical. Well, if we connect a line from C to the center of rotation, which is the origin, and then we connect a line from C prime to the center of rotation, then we have an angle radical. Now, we don't have to know specifically what that angle is right now, but if we compared A, for example, which we could connect A with the center of rotation to this A prime radical, you guys can see, hopefully, that this is the same angle as the angle between C and C prime. If there are 360 degrees in one full rotation, which there are, determine the angle of rotation from one image to the next in the picture above. Uh, we're not too concerned with that, again, right now. Uh, we could say, well, I guess we can just do it. What the heck? So first, what we can do is look at these. Uh, and we can see that they're all rotated the same amount from each one to the next. And how many of the images are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And there is the twelfth one, which is the pre image. So we have 360 degrees divided by 12 images, because they're all separated by an angle of rotation equally. And we would get 30 degrees. That is the angle of rotation from C to this C prime, and then from C prime to this next C prime, which could be C prime prime, and then from C prime prime to C prime prime prime, right here. And then we work our way all the way around to connect all of the C's. Well, I've drawn a circle right there. I mean, it's not great, but you can see all the C primes lie on the same circle. We could do the same thing with the B primes and A primes, but that was hard enough to get that for the C. So They're all on the, a circle because we're rotating this about the same center, in this case specifically the origin. Now, we will be rotating these a specific number of degrees, in ninth grade, you guys will be rotating these any various amount of degrees, but we're focusing specifically today on 90 and 180 degree rotations. You could say 270 if you wanted. All right, perpendicular lines. This is very important as we start rotating these 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. Perpendicular lines at 90 degrees have opposite reciprocal slopes or sloppages. So what this means, for example, if I found a sloppage was negative two-thirds, and I wanted the opposite reciprocal sloppage, well, the opposite would be positive, because this one's negative right account. And then I reciprocate the fraction, or flip it. Some people like that word, flip. And then the sloppage of a line that is perpendicular at 90 degrees would be 3 halves. All right, we'll try just one more. So let's say that we had a sloppage of 4. Well, we could say this is 4 over 1. So the opposite reciprocal sloppage would be a negative, and then we flip that fraction for the reciprocal, would be negative 1 fourth. This is going to apply a lot as we start rotating these 90 degrees. 
All right, the, the picture from the previous page with the yellow graph. Well, we got rid of a lot of those and just looked at uh, 90 and 180 degree rotations. By the way, 180 degrees doesn't really matter if you rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. <clears throat> rotation of the pre-image, uh, the center of rotation is the origin, which we should identify. They've kind of given us those little red dotted lines. It's not red on your paper, but it is right here. Verify using tracing paper that the descriptions of the rotation are accurate. The rotation from figure one to figure four, and this is figure four right here, has been described as a 90 degree counterclockwise rot rotation. How would you describe this rotation in the clockwise direction? We'll get to that. But let's confirm that it's 90 degrees, all right? All right, to do this, I'm going to use point A. And we will compare this to a prime right here. And of course, the center of rotation we will need to compare also. So, <clears throat> I need to find the sloppage of the line that connects A to the center of rotation. And we can do that using the stair step method. This one goes down to, and then to the right. Uh, looks like this one is a 7. So the sloppage of this line, right here, is down 2, so negative 2 over a positive to the right 7. Now we're going to do the same thing with A prime for this 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. And we need to find the sloppage of it. So we'll make a little stair step right here. And we can see now that this one goes to the right because we always go to the right. Right to and then up 7. So the sloppage from A prime to the center of rotation is up 7. That's positive 7 over negative 2. Uh, no, that's positive 2. What the heck? Positive 2. There we go. And when we compare these two, we can see that they are opposite reciprocals of each other. What this means, and this is where the 90 degree angle is, is that we have a 90 degree perpendicular relationship between those two lines. If for some reason we found that the sloppages were not opposite reciprocals, then we could not say that this rotation was 90 degrees. But in this case it is, so we're good. Yeah, that's a good question. <clears throat> if we look at the sloppage here on this from the green line, this one's a negative 2 sevenths. Uh, so it's not the opposite of each of them. It's the opposite of the entire fraction. So that's why this one has to be positive, positive. Now on the other hand, and this is good to keep in mind as well, 7 halves is the same as negative 7 over negative 2, which means if we had started at the center of rotation right here, you would have went down 7 and then to the left 2. It's the same sloppage. The next question was, what if we rotated this clockwise, which is in this direction, right? Well, if this whole thing as a circle would give us 360 degrees, and we know this is 90 degrees right account, then how many degrees is this rotation? Three, it's, well, no, the, I just, sorry, let me show that. The purple rotation goes only to this line. 280? That is close. That is close. 270, right? So it's... Yeah, you're good. Right? This would be 360, because that's a full circle, but we're subtracting the 90 degrees that we found right account. And we get 270 degrees. But that would be clockwise. Clockwise is a long word, so I'm only going to put CW.
Consider the rotation from figure 1 to figure 2, a 90 degree counterclockwise. So we're looking at our pre image, which is right here, ABC. And we're looking at this A prime, B prime, C prime triangle. Uh, find the sloppages of each of these. So let's look at the sloppage of AC right here at the bottom. Well, that's a sloppage. It has a rise of 0 and a run of 5, which simplifies to 0. Bam, 0. Now let's go directly across and compare AC, which is right, right here in the list. This one has a rise of 5 and a run of 0. Well, that would be an undefined sloppage because we can't define, uh, divide by 0. Um, which kind of, of itself is the opposite reciprocal, right? Just as a 90 degree rotation is with those sloppages. Let's confirm that though, looking at AB. So AB has a sloppage of up to to the right 3. So up to to the right 3. So A prime, B prime, if this pattern continues, should be the opposite reciprocal. Let's check. So we go to the right 2 and down 3. Uh, maybe I did that backwards. Let's try that again. Down 3 and to the right 2, still the same thing though. Down 3 and then to the right 2. Those two sloppages are opposite reciprocals. So what this means is that whenever you rotate something 90 degrees, these sloppages will be opposite reciprocals of each other. So when we look at BC, which has a sloppage of down 2 to the right 2, and down 2 and to the right 2, which is negative 1, B prime, C prime, we should be able to predict that the sloppage then would be a positive 2 over 2 or 1. Let's check. So we go up 2 to the right 2, and that simplifies to 1. And our prediction is correct. All right, this is just a nice principle to remember. When rotating 90 degrees, corresponding line segments of the image and pre-image will be opposite reciprocals of each other because of the 90 degree rotation. Use the slopes from the previous question to determine the rela relationships between corresponding segments in a 90 degree rotation. That's what we just did. So these lines are, would be perpendicular. Uh, what this means is if we were to extend A prime, B prime, and A, A, A B, like these, we would get a 90 degree angle right account. Which segments would you expect to be perpendicular in the rotation from figure one? which is right account, to figure 4, right account. The rotation 90 degree counterclockwise. Use sloppage to support your answer. Well, all the corresponding segments should be perpendicular, and you could find that with the sloppages. Let's just look at um, AB. That's up to, and then to the right 3. From A prime to B prime, that's up 3 to the left 2. So 3 and 2, so that's a negative 2 because we went to the left. So they are opposite reciprocals of each other. Now let us determine the coordinate rule for a 90 degree rotation clockwise about the origin. Connect this rule to the sloppages of the perpendicular lines. Well, the sloppages were all opposite reciprocals. Let's see what happens with these. So let's focus on A because the values are very different. And we're looking specifically at these two shapes. The coordinates of A appear to be negative 7, 2. 
and a prime appear to be 2, 7. That's a prime. Well, what's the coordinate rule then? Well, we've got our a, which is always going to be x and y. It goes through a transformation. But what happened right now? Well, it looks like we switched the x and the y. So it would look something like these. But then what did we do? Well, the 7 became, the negative 7 became a positive 7. <coughs> that was the original x value right here. So we changed the x value to its opposite <coughs> or multiplied it by a negative 1, which you could put right, right there. But does this rule hold for the other points? Let's look at b. The coordinates for b are uh, negative 4 and 4. And b prime is 4, 4. That doesn't help us too much because it's a bunch of 4s, but they did flip, and we did change the x value to a positive x value. Just we put it in the y position. There it is, our coordinate rule. So one thing to think about is, what if we rotated it counterclockwise? How does that affect the rule? Uh, not necessarily opposite. But one thing is opposite, right? It's still going to be the opposite reciprocal. So if we look at these ones, let's again focus on A because the X and Y coordinates are different. The coordinates for A are negative 7, 2, and this A prime right here has the coordinates of negative 7. No, that's backwards, sorry. Negative 2, negative 7. There you go. So what happened right here? Well, the same thing happened. We have our original x, y. We transformed it. But we flipped again the x and y values right here. So we have x and a y. But we didn't change the sign of x. What we changed was the sign of y, so that's a negative y now. Which, when we rotated it clockwise, it was the x that was negative. Describe what happens in a 180 degree rotation of a figure. What is the relationship of the corresponding segments? Well, the nice thing about 180 degree rotations, thank you, is that the line that connects the pre-image point to the image point is just a straight line because that's 180 degrees is a straight, well, straight angle if you want. So let's look at A and A prime. Well, let's not really focus on that uh, center. Let's just connect these two points. Okay. Now, when we connect those two points, as it just turns out, that line just happens to go through the center of rotation. Okay. Well, the same thing would, would happen if we connected the Bs, which is also the same line that's on the Cs. You guys see that right there? Now we could compare this to reflections because of its orientation. There are two reflections that would give us that, but we'll cover that some other time. All right, so what does it say about the relationship of the corresponding segments? Let's take a look at those. Well, A to B has a sloppage of 2 thirds. And from B prime to A prime, is up to to the right three. It's the same sloppage. What about AC? Well, that has a sloppage of zero. Same with A prime, C prime. And also BC has a sloppage of down two to the right two. It's a negative one. And the same thing here. We go down two to the right two, which would give us a negative one. The sloppages are all the same. Oh, that's good. 
So, since all the sloppages are the same, but they have different y-intercepts, really, we can say that these corresponding segments are also parallel. Determine the coordinate rule for a rotation of 180 degrees. Again, let's look at the A coordinate. A is at negative 7, 2. And A prime is at 7, negative 2. So what has happened right now? Well, the values didn't switch like they did with the 90 degree rotation because they are not opposite reciprocal sloppages. The sloppages between these corresponding segments were the same. Uh, so what's happened right now? Well, we changed the sign of the x and we also changed the sign of the y. So we just switch their signs. Does that work for all of them? Well, let's check. C is a negative 2, 2. C prime right account is a 2, negative 2. Yes, it works for C as well. You'd find it works the same way, not for that B, but this one. This B and B prime. So that is the coordinate rule. Determine the angle of rotation. Be sure to also indicate a direction of rotation. If the slope of something is... What the heck is that? Determine the slope of something else without doing any calculations. No need. We're not worried about that. Let's look at the angle of rotation. So on this one, it's nice because we kind of get to assume that all of the centers of rotation are the origin. We'll talk about a way uh, to find that center of rotation when it is not given, though. So what is the angle of rotation? Well, let's look at just, again, any two of these points. Let's look at E. This has a sloppage of down 3, and then to the right, 7. So that was a sloppage of down 3, to the right, 7. Well, what about to E prime, like these? Well, we go down 7, and then to the right, 3. So that's down 7. I, I said to the right. I meant to the left. Left 3, which really gives us a positive 7 thirds. These are opposite reciprocals, which means we know that this angle right here is 90 degrees. And which direction? Well, this is the pre-image. This is the image. It was rotated counterclockwise. So this is a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Wait, how did you get negative 7? So if the sloppage of something is negative 2, which it looks like that's FG. Is that what it says on your paper? GH or E? EH? It's not going to matter, really. That sloppage and that sloppage are both negative 2. So it's corresponding line segment in the image should also have a sloppage. Well, it will have an opposite reciprocal sloppage. So without really doing any calculations, the opposite reciprocal of that is 1 half, which is positive. For the following rotation, the center of rotation is the origin. Once again, there it is. Term the angle of rotation. So we really just need to compare <coughs> corresponding parts. Let's look at Q prime and Q. To, from the center of rotation, the origin, to Q, we go up to and then to the right, 7, which gives us a sloppage of 2 sevenths. And from Q prime to the center of rotation, we go up to to the right 7. So these both have the same sloppage, which
which means that this must be a 180 degree rotation. And you could put counterclockwise or clockwise, it's not going to make a difference. 180 degrees is 180 degrees. And there we go, we can see that by connecting the two points with a straight line. And that line does go through the origin, which is the center of rotation. All right, we're going to rotate this line. Uh, what are the, is that a Q and an R? Is that right? Or is it P, P, R? Q and P? Is that the Q? Oh, that's the P, dang it. P and a Q. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that will be in this direction with the center of rotation at the origin. And we will label this. How can we verify using sloppage that the image is 90 degree rotation? The sloppages should be opposite reciprocals. We'll get to that. All right, so let's rotate these 90 degrees counterclockwise. Well, this sloppage from the center of rotation to P is up six to the right two. So since it's a 90 degree rotation, we will make that the opposite reciprocal, which would then be a negative 2 over 6. Now there's no need to simplify this because the distances have to be the same from the pre-image to the center of rotation, the points, okay? So this one also, we're going to go from the center of rotation. Uh, Wait, oh, okay. Or well, 6 is on top for this sloppage of the red line. That is a 6 over 2 right there. Oh, and then you flip there. Now here's the problem is, if I go down to, to the right 6, that gave me a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, but it asked us to do a clockwise rotation. So I need to switch where that negative is, make that a 2 over negative 6. The value of that sloppage does not change. So in other words, now I go up to and to the left 6, right account. And that would be where P prime is. P prime. And we can see that the angle created between that purple and red line that connects the point to the center of rotation is 90 degrees. The same thing will work with Q. Q has a sloppage from the point to the central rotation of up to to the right eight. So we have two eighths. Its opposite reciprocal will be a negative two over eight. Uh, let me negative eight over two. That's better. <clears throat> but if I go do, down eight and to the right two, that's a counterclockwise rotation. Oh, that's a clockwise, right? We're doing this counterclockwise, right? Yeah, yeah counterclockwise. Yeah, we're good. So that would give us a, a clockwise rotation. We need a counterclockwise. So all I'm going to do is change where that negative is. I'm going to have an 8 over negative 2. These are both the same. They're proportional. So I'm going to go up 8 and to the left 2, which gives me this point for Q prime. Now when I connect P prime and Q prime, I get this line right here. And if I look at the line that connects Q prime to the center of rotation, I get that 90 degree angle right here. And we can verify that they are 90 degree rotation simply by looking at the sloppage from P to Q, which is down 1, 2, 3, 4. Down four and to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And from P prime to Q prime, it was up six and then to the right four. And these two are opposite reciprocals of each other.
And we can see right account that they both lie on a circle. Both points, the corresponding points lie in a circle. So uh, again, if we looked at that, what was that negative six two and negative two eight? So there's the corresponding line segment right there. How can you verify using distance that the center of rotation is the origin? Well, you'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem, but uh, that's what those circles tell us. A circle has a radius, the same radius everywhere. So this distance is the same as this distance because, well, that's from the center to the edge of the circle for both P and P prime. Same thing works for Q and Q prime. Those distances are the same because we can see right now that they're on the same circle. Rotate this 180 degrees clockwise with the central rotation at the origin. There's the origin. <clears throat> and we're doing this 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise is not important. So we look at the sloppage from the central rotation to this point. Oh, what's the label for this? A? Is this C? Is this B? All right, so A prime, we'll just have the same sloppage in the other direction, the same distance away from the center of rotation. So this is where A prime is right account. C prime is up one to the right four. So we just use the same stair step, which has the same sloppage to find C prime. This guarantees that these are the same distance away from the center of rotation. Notice I'm not connecting these points because we're not focused on the lines. B has a sloppage of up 7 to the right 4. So I'll continue this 4 and 7. A little off on the chart there. Would be right, right account. And there is B prime. All I've got to do now is connect these and I have my triangle that's been rotated 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise with the center of rotation at the origin. And we did label the image as well. In our prior work with rotations, the center of rotation was always the origin, but uh, that's not always going to be the case. So we've got to use everything we've learned in order to find where it is. But uh, we're also going to talk about other ways to do that. So this one, rotate 180 degrees counterclockwise with the center of rotation at 1, 1. How can we verify that the center of rotation is at 1, 1? We'll talk about that later, but 1, 1 is this point right account. And I think, I think it was like this, A, B, C, like this. Well, if we rotate A about A, then A prime would be in the same point because that's our center of rotation. And since A is zero units away from the center of rotation, A prime also will be zero units. And this is 180 degrees, right? Yeah. So when we connect C to the center of rotation, that has a sloppage of zero, but it was to the right three. So we're going to go three in the other direction. One, two, three. And that gives us C prime, right account. And we can do the same thing with B, is 180 degrees. From the center of rotation, this is up six and then to the right three. 
So I'm going to use the same triangle or stair step to find uh, k prime to the well, that'd be to the right three and up three from this point b prime. And now I can connect these. Well, maybe a little bit better than that, but. And there is the triangle rotated about the point, 1, 1. So how can we verify that the center of rotation is at 1, 1? Corresponding segments are the same distance away from 1, 1. And that's true. And we use the sloppages to do that. You could find the exact distance using the Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to. Rotate this 90 degrees clockwise with the center of rotation at 0, 4. Uh, this is a clockwise rotation, so we're going to be rotating it this way. I can verify using slope that your image is, in fact, a 90-degree rotation. Let's look. So 0, 4 is right account. Uh, this was P and Q, right? So P is up 2 to the right 2 from the center of rotation. So the opposite reciprocal of that is negative 2 over 2. So I'm going to go down 2 to the right 2, and that should give me a 90 degree angle right account. Again, that's from the line that connects the point to the center of rotation, and this would be then P prime. Let's look at Q now. Q has a sloppage of down 2 to the right 8. So the opposite reciprocal of negative 2 over 8 would be positive 8 over 2. Uh, but that would put us, well, not where we need to be. So we're going to make both these negative. We're going to go down 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then to the right 2, right account. What the heck? I meant to the left too, what the heck. Right account. And this should be Q prime. Connecting these two points gives us this line right here. Now we could verify this is a 90 degree angle, uh, which, I mean, it should show, no, not that one, this one. It should be a 90 degree angle right here. But we can check using the sloppages from P to Q and P prime to Q prime. So this one had a sloppage of down four to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the opposite reciprocal of that should be six over four. Let's find out, up six to the right four, done. Right there. So that confirms that it is a 90 degree angle. Bam. Oh yeah, and we did rotate that counter no, clockwise this time, so Q to Q prime and uh, P to P prime about this center of rotation. There it is. Uh, how can you verify using distance that the center of rotation is at 0, 4? Well, you could find the distance using the Pythagorean theorem between P and the center of rotation and P prime to the center of rotation. Or you could draw circles, I guess. A teacher asked her student to determine the center of rotation and angle of rotation for the rotation shown below. Someone described the rotation as a 90 degree clockwise with the center at negative 6, 2. Do you agree with this person? Well, it looks like we're good on that because the points lie on a circle so they are the same distance away from the center of rotation. So right count, we got to find the angle of rotation and the center. Let's look at how to do that. All right, so we got that chart right there, but let's look at what this is actually saying right count. So we have to look at corresponding parts. Let's look at these two points, and then these two points right account, and see if we can get those to work. So what we need to do first is connect these two, and you can find 
or you could use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint between these two lines. The midpoint between these two points, does it give you guys uh, labels for those points? What are they? Is, is this A? Is this A? Oh, so this one's not A. So this one would be A prime. Is this one B? And this one is B prime? All right. So A and A prime. Uh, when I connect those two lines, if I find the midpoint between those two, we can see that it's right account. Just by splitting the difference between the height and then the distance between the x's. So that's 2 and 3, which gives me this point right account. Let's look now at B and B prime. If we connect these two using a line like this, we can see the difference between the height is 2, and the distance between the length, right account, is 10. So I'm going to go 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that would be uh, this point, right account. All right, from these two points, what we need are the perpendic are perpendicular lines from these. And since we can see the sloppage from A to this center, or the middle of that line, is 3 over 2, the opposite reciprocal of that would be down 2 to the right 3. Down 2 to the right 3. 3, there we go. And that would give us this line right here. Hopefully you guys draw this better. Yeah, hold on a second. All right, just to finish this, is the sloppage between B and B prime, if I look at that middle point, was up to and then to the right 5. So the opposite reciprocal of that is down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and to the right 2. If I connect these two points, I have a perpendicular line for those two lavender lines. Where those two perpendicular lines meet, that is the center of rotation. Right account. So hopefully you guys can see why those perpendicular line things and the sloppages are so important. Right account. So the angle of rotation right account, since we found the center of rotation, you'd use sloppages now to find that angle. We can see that this was a 90 degree angle in the clockwise rotation. So there's a 90 degree clockwise rotation. Another way we can tell that that is the center of rotation is because C and C prime are on the same point. Since they are equidistant from each other, that means that it's also the center of rotation right there. All right, we got to find the angle of rotation on this one, and we also have to find the center of rotation which is great. For example, we need to look at these uh, two. Now let's find where the center of rotation is first, by the way. So I don't know what point this is on your paper or this one, but they are corresponding according to the rotation. So I need to connect these. Now this whole process is extremely long, kind of. And it's just to find the center of rotation. Once we have that, we can find the angle of rotation. All right? So how far apart are these in terms of sloppage? Well, that's a 4 and 6. That's a 10 difference and 4 difference right account. We need to find the middle of that purple line, which would be 5 away from both. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 2 away horizontally, which would be two away right account. And I guess if I had drawn my line better, we would see that it goes through this point right account. That is the center of that line. Okay? And what I must do now is draw a line perpendicular to that line. Well, this sloppage, if I simplified it, would be five halves. So the perpendicular line will be a negative 2 fifths. 
Oh, that was a negative 5 halves. So that's a positive 2 fifths. There we go. So I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 5, which puts me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right account. And that's the only point I can put on there. And then I connect these. Hopefully your lines are better looking than mine. All right, and I'm going to keep those. The next, I've got to do the same thing with uh, some of the other points. Let's compare these two points. Now again, if I connect these, I can find the distances horizontally and vertically, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means it would be three and a half away, right here. It may not work too well. Hmm. We may use a different one, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So still a decimal. That's two and a half. So its halfway point would be right about right account. Yeah, so it's going to be hard to make a perpendicular line to that one. Hmm. So let's try this with two other points, like these two corresponding points. Well, they're even away. They are one, two, three, four, five, six away. So halfway between that line is right account. Since it's straight up and down, the perpendicular line is just this horizontal line right account. Well, where those two perpendicular lines meet is the center of rotation. Bam! We can see that that point is right account. Any questions? So now that we have the center of rotation, we can see these two points are corresponding. And I think this is the pre-image, and this is the image on your paper. And if we connect these two lines, we can see, well, if you drew the lines better than I did, that this is a 90-degree counterclockwise rotation. Again, using all the same methods that we did, finding the sloppage of one line to the other line. We could have also done that using the sloppage of these lines and comparing them to the sloppages of these ones. When we find that they're perpendicular, we know that the angle of rotation is 90 degrees. All right, what's the angle of rotation on these? I think it's the same thing, PQ. So this is P prime, Q prime. Now the nice thing about these is, well, hopefully we can tell it's 180 degrees, but how is that possible? Well, if we connect the lines, right account, that kind of tells us the angle of rotation. These are the same distance away, so we're in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape right there. Okay. Uh, also, at the same time, these are perpendicular from each other. So, using the same method on the last problem, you get the same same answer right there. So the angle of rotation is 180 degrees. The direction won't matter for 180 degrees, but the center of rotation looks like that is five zero.